Okay, so the adapter I used here is from the wheel bearing kit. And so it's just small enough that I can just hammer it on the edges and in the center. And that pops the bearing out. So now the bearing is out after like two or three hours of trying to get this thing out. Looks like I forgot to hit record, but basically what I did was I spread these uh, circlips out and then I tapped this corner and that made the circlips uh, bind and hold hold open and so once that happened I kept holding these open and I went around and I tapped it and eventually these circlips just uh, opened up and just held in place because it was wedged and then I just kept doing this until it bottomed out and it just snapped into place um, if I had to do this over again I probably wouldn't do it it's, it's not worth the hassle it, unless these are really damaged uh, it's not worth the hassle because it took like two or three hours to get that out and it took like 10 minutes to put it back in but whoever designed these circlips really had no clue what they're doing because the, this circlip just doesn't work all right here's the crazy setup i've got set up um two screwdrivers i actually needed these flat heads but it's kind of too late and i've got this bar because i need the gap and well i don't just need the gap i need access to this and the other side is it's basically that um, that adapter so that I can push the bearing through and it's it's smaller than the bearing but it's pushing on the outer race so the trick of doing this is this put pressure onto you well you're gonna spread the circlip and then you're gonna clamp this down and you're gonna keep trying to hold that open while you clamp this down and then the the actual trick is take a punch or a flathead here and and lightly hammer it so that it spreads out even more since it's under pressure and it's clamped here when you jar it it uh, it makes it jump the uh, it makes it jump out of the bearings groove like it already did and then you should be able to clamp it down more And then just keep um, keep hammering here and here, and eventually that thing um, it will jump out of its groove completely. And then you should be able to clamp this down, and it will push the bearing up. I hammered it there, and I hammered it here, and it spread it out even more. And now it's it's letting me um, push this through. It's kind of hard to see but it's completely jumped out of its groove and the tension on this is almost nothing. So I don't I don't even need a wrench here. And so I guess that's the trick of knowing um, if it's binding or not. If you need a wrench that means it's it's bound. At least at least for this um, this bearing here. I think it's actually sp it's spinning and what you can see here is the circlips actually jumped all the way to the bottom of the bearing 
but the problem is the bearing is not completely out so it's mostly out but it's not completely out and so the problem is you're probably going to have to try to um, use the punch and be careful not to damage the wall the punch on the other side on just like one corner and I barely had to use any pressure and the bearing pretty much just came out and so you can see that this one is keyed in at the bottom groove so you can't install this upside down so just like the rest of them this one's probably the most badly damaged circlip as you can see it's kind of weird it's got like these lines in it so it's got some kind of weird damage or something and what's weird is this circlip's um, yeah this this circlip is the biggest circlip it's bigger than this one so this must be the biggest yeah this is the biggest uh, bearing yeah this hole is bigger than this hole so to get this circlip out might be able to just do it by hand actually it's probably smarter to do it from the other direction I'm trying to pull it out this way but it's closer to this side so Yeah, this one's this one's gonna be hard to get out. Like, the best way is actually to go out this way because it's got the groove. It's got the cutout here. So actually, I'm trying to hold that that end up against there so it doesn't slide into its bo um, bore. Yeah, it's a lot easier that way. And actually the damage is not that bad. Okay, so the trick of getting this one in is get the bottom one in, like how you see here. Because once it's in there, you push it into its groove and that gives it more room over here. And then you can push this in and down and it just snaps into place and then now we can put our bearing back in the trick for this one is spread the circlip and then give it a sharp um, tap here and that jams the or it spreads the circlip open and it, and it holds it and then w once that happens, you should be able to just tap it all the way around. And it should just fall into place. And the circlip uh, closed itself. So that should mean that it went back in its groove. Alright, these instructions aren't uh, super specific. I made a phone call to um, Superior and one of the R&D guys helped him with this. Basically this is ser a reverse servo body. So on the servo body there's two um, CPC valves that you replace along with the end plug that has an o-ring on it and their new black spring. So that o-ring goes at the end and the low um, pin um, sticks outwards and this one also not very clear 
This is actually the top accumulator. It sits, it bolts on top of the servo body. So this is actually cap valve C. It's That's what it's listed as uh, in the repair manual. So here's the top accumulator and the valve that we're, we have to replace is this one right here. It's the longer valve. So here's the shorter valve. I've already taken it out. Basically all you do is um, you take out the clip, take out the end plug, this faced outwards, and this is the original valve and the spring was inside of it and this was sticking outwards towards the end plug and I noticed that this actually is it's pretty scratched up so what I did was um, I'm not reusing this but I'm going to keep it I polished the valve with the bench buddy just a little bit because I don't really want, I don't need the whole bigger I've already tested the new valve and it it's fine so polished it a tiny bit, um, sprayed with brake clean cleaner. Make sure you don't get the brake cleaner on any of the O-rings because it'll expand it, and that's not good for it. Or, or at least um, it's gonna take a while for it to shrink. I don't know if it damages them or not. So these all three are the same. So, as far as I can tell, the way it works is um, the hole. That's where you install the new black spring. So from the from the kit it looks like there's actually three springs there. So just take one of those springs and stick it in here. And then um, there are end plugs. These are actually steel. I don't really like the O-rings, but what I notice is that the height of from here from the if if you don't look at the low nipple or the the pin it starts from there that edge all the way to the bottom and it's actually slightly shorter than the original one you're not going to be able to tell on camera but it's just slightly smaller so i wanted to use the old one but i'm just going to go ahead and use this one because maybe um, it needs that that tiny bit smaller uh, height. So the first thing that we're gonna do is oil this. And the end plug too. Just the, actually let's, yeah, just do the whole thing. Okay. So, okay, so you're not going to reuse the old spring that it comes with its own spring from the kit. Should be three of them, one for each valve. Put it in the bottom. And then we're going to drop this into its bore. So, like I said, it's not this one it's the one that's towards the end and it's actually better if okay I'm just gonna I'll just show you but it's better to ha hold this upside down so the spring um, doesn't just fall in but do not I mean, I'll fix it later, but I'm just trying to show you on camera. So the spring is right there. And just make sure that the valve um, isn't, isn't stuck. Make sure it's free. Okay, so actually what I did is I took out the spring and we're going to do a test to make sure that the valve is free without the spring. So you can see there, 
sort of, that it dropped by itself. And let's see if I can show you, but it's um, the valve is completely at the bottom. So it's dropping free and it doesn't even need to come out this much because that's that's not how much motion it has. But you can hear that it's bo bottoming out. So it's free and we're going to put the spring back in. Right. Also, um, so the spring is down here and the valves are in. I wish I could show you, but the camera's not picking it up. Basically right here. You can see that there's a cutout, like a channel at the bottom. What that channel is actually doing is this. It goes here and then there's a circle and the channel comes back out. The spring sits into that little groove so it it actually gets kind of locked in at the bottom and I'm thinking the channel is for um, lubrication or it actually might be where uh, the pressure is pushing up against it probably and the next thing that we need to do is take the end plug that they gave us and we're gonna put it in here Pretty tight fit with the O-ring. Just using a circular motion so I don't um, get it caught. I think I gotta push down on it a little bit more. But it's not. Okay, there. So it looks like at that point. Um, that's where we stick in the um, retainer clip, the original one. And this is actually kind of nice that they they give us this because now you've got you can get pliers or whatever and and you can destroy this and it's, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, you can probably put a magnet on that too. So there's the retaining clip and like always what you want to do is get something in there um, like a pick or something and push it out this way because the end plug always has to sit furthest out this way right so I'm thinking that's um, the proper way to do it it looks like it's roughly flush with the casing here right this is the type of um, retainer that I haven't showed yet it's just a flat bar so basically it looks I don't even know okay um, right here you can see there's a hole and I'm pushing on that hole this is a steel bar here Alright, another thing is um, where that bar is, on the other side there's a hole that you can stick something into. So just be careful you're not pushing against the spring.
Okay, so... There's the bar. And stick your finger here because the spring is going to shoot out. Okay, so that's what that bar looks like. We're going to check um, the valve. We're going to take the spring out. And then see how much free play the valve has. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of dark fluid in there. And I've actually cleaned this whole thing, so that thing must not get enough lubrication. So I'll take this out and I'll clean everything and I'll try putting it back in, but I might have to polish that. All right, so actually the free play is pretty good. It was just getting stuck here and it doesn't need that much. It only needs free play down here. So, I mean, I'll try, try it again, but basically it might just be really dirty. Right, so I put oil in it and I put it back in. And might not be able to show you here, but um, it's not binding. And with the spring and fluid pressure, it should be fine. That sound was it bottoming out. It seems like it's stuck, but it's not. It's it's completely free. So I'm happy with the way it is. Um, I'll check the bore, see if there's anything scratched up, and if there is, then I'll polish a little bit. So I did polish it a slight bit, and now I'm okay with it. So, the valve is in there. This goes inside the valve. And then, we're just going to put the plate back in. Or the, re the retaining plate. So, I don't think it matters which side. But it does need to go in this way. And... Uh, one of the instructions in the repair manual say actually stick a flathead here to hold the spring down while you insert um, the plate in. So I didn't show it, but I pushed the spring down with the flathead while I um, slid this in. And then I kind of pushed the spring this way so that the plate can go in the rest of the way. And you can kind of see just a little bit of the spring there in the middle. I'm just pushing the spring so it's centered. Oh, the hole in here must be for lubrication. But obviously it doesn't work that well because you saw that it was all black inside. So I'll push this the rest of the way in. Alright, it's kind of hard to do it on cameras with one hand, so let, I'm going to do that. Okay, so here's the servo body, and that's what it's talking about there. Just ignore the reverse part. Um, this plate, uh, the instructions do say to drill some holes somewhere, a few holes here. 
I haven't looked at the directions yet. But right now we don't actually need this. And if you do mess up on the holes, that thing's only like $8.60. So it's not that big of a deal if you mess it up. So um, with the plate on, that top accumulator bolts right on top of this. So you should know that the CPC valves are, there's two here and then there's one on top of the body that's on top of here. So, okay, so it looks like there's four valves here. Um, the two CPC valves that we need to install are either these two because they're identical height or it's going to be probably not these two actually because they go all the way down here there's no way that the valve is that long actually it could be um, this might actually be two two piece uh, valve type thing but we're going to check them all anyways we're going to start with this one okay so one really important thing is do these one at a time don't just take them all out because you can mix them up so I've taken out the retaining clip from right here and I'm guessing that this yeah this this end plug is stuck so I'm gonna I'm gonna get a flathead and try to um, get that out okay so I stuck my flathead in try not to um, scratch up the actual valve that's underneath so I put that in like that and you probably can't even see the valve but the valve is the end of the valve is right there so I'm going to try to put my pick in and turn it this way to push out the end plug a little bit more I don't know why they designed these end plugs like this. It's a really bad design. Okay, so how I got the end plug out was I switched to a metal pick and I put it in this way, trying not to scratch up the actual valve. And then I turned the hook this way and it kind of pushed it out. Yeah, just like that. Once you have enough of this groove, that groove is for where the clip was. Once you have enough of that, you can get a flathead and take that out by just twisting the flathead and I don't know why they even put that groove there that doesn't really help that much alright I know it's really hard to see but this camera doesn't pick up shadows that well Basically what I did was there's a little cutout in um, the valve and I had to just carefully um, push that through and then it actually opened up this back part here and you just have to just find whatever you can to pull this out because this valve is stuck it's like super stuck And then I might try to put a magnet on here. See if that'll work. Looks like it's not um, close enough to the end yet. So what I did is I just put it on my thigh and just tapped it out. And now it's... Um, I actually can do it two ways, but I'm going to show you what, how to use the magnet. So just put the magnet there, and there. Because the valves are made of uh, probably stainless steel. All 
Great, so these valves are the same. I checked them, same height and everything. So what I was doing was um, using my brass pick. Sometimes you may have to use steel because brass isn't that strong. And I was grabbing onto whatever edge I could to push it out, including these oil channels here. I was trying to not damage the spring, but actually I'm not reusing this, so... Um, yeah, just whatever you can to push it out. Alright, so I've got the new valve in there. And it does bottom out. Um, you should have heard that. It bottomed out. It's weird because this the new valve is um, really free. Actually, it seemed might actually be loose, and the old one was binding. So, not sure what that was about. So I figured out why the old one was binding. There's some. Um, you can't even see it on the camera actually. But there's the tiniest bit of um, scratches here. Like right at the very edge, the very edge of here, there's tiny scratches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and polish that because there's probably more scratches in there. Alright, so I'm going to try to show you the right way of doing this. Spring is in it's the new valve and I've oiled the valve up and I've already polished this and sprayed it out with brake cleaner. So spring goes in first, upside down so that the spring doesn't um, just fall in there. And just be really uh, careful. So the spring looks like it's bottomed out. And that should be in there and then we're going to put the end plug back in okay so I put oil on the end plug and I put the o-ring on it At least the end plug's working. These things are a really tight fit. So I'm going to keep working on this. I need both hands to put that in because I might need to push that down. But this valve should be the same. I'm not going to show you that then. And these two. Um, are probably different so I'll show you these two all right just a reminder again um, once I put the end plug in it sat down too far so I got my pick and I pushed it back up and I put my clip in or put the clip in first and then pushed it up against the clip and so it should be about flush it was sitting under flush like way under like an eighth of an inch under so just make sure that your end plugs are always seated against um, the outside. So I took this valve out here. Um, these are the two CPC valves. I've done them already. This one was super stuck. I had to polish this for a long time. And yeah, just be careful. Check every valve. I'll, I actually wasn't going to check any of these valves, but I'm glad I did. Just make sure you check every valve on every body that you have. This is really light. It's like, It feels like plastic. So it had this long spring in it. And use your tubing cutter to cut a groove on here. Um, probably, roughly, probably, just look at the case, uh, the cat casing here you want the cut to be in the middle of this 
So you're going to cut that groove with a tubing cutter and it's going to help seal a little bit better because this one was a little bit loose. But I'm probably sure it's because of the spring. It probably caused it to vibrate and loosen up. So I cleaned this up and this actually drops free so this one probably doesn't need any polishing.